Hi, your next six Caillou challenge is called ASCII Fun Number Three Puzzle Tiles. Uh, because I guess this guy's made a couple other parts like this, so you will essentially be constructing a puzzle like this using characters on your keyboard to make the pieces. So you can see this is an underscore, then a uh, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, etc. And notice how they give you two parameters. They're poorly named here, but they tell you how wide, meaning four pieces wide, and how many rows. The second one's how many rows. So let's go ahead and update that. I'll just call it width, and I'll call it, I suppose you can call it height. Whatever you want to call it, rows or height. And so, yeah, that's all you have to do. Um, one thing I wanted to point out, they have a handy way of checking, so they kind of built this into the tests. See how they, very handy, I don't have anything because I didn't type anything, but it, they show you how it should look for an input of one and one, meaning one piece and only one row, and it looks like this. So as you type in your answers, uh, you'll start to see your solution. You can really visibly check it. It's really nice instead of having to work with this, right? Expected value, it's this ugly thing that isn't intuitive. You can't really tell what it is just by looking at the at it as a single line of text. Um, so that's pretty handy. Uh, feel free to use that to sort of uh, piece together your solution as you go. That's how I'm going to do it, build it a little bit at a time. And so you know what to do. Go ahead and pause the video. I don't think there's anything else to say about instructions. That's it, you're making this puzzle. One thing to note that the pieces do change. Um, so you see the odd number of rows, right? That piece is different than this second row. It's got kind of the cut in in the middle here, whereas rows one and three bulge out here. So the pieces change with um, odd and even number of rows a little bit. So go ahead, pause now. Build your solution, come on back, and we'll get into it. So I already renamed those bad parameter names. And I think the best way for me to show you my strategy for this is to just sort of um, write out my solution without fully implementing it, because it's simple when you make the right um, helper members and methods to get it done. So I'm going to use String Builder, but you could just use String. String builder, I'll call it puzzle, right? And we gotta initialize that, make it a new string builder. And to use string builder, if you remember, I know it's been a while, it should be using system text. So we can use that. Okay, so we've got this string builder. We can sort of build the puzzle row by row as my strategy. So what I want to eventually get to, um, i is less than rows plus plus. You know what, I might even call it row. I don't have to be that into script here. That reads nicely too. So then for each row, I wanna do something like puzzle. Remember with string builder, you use append. Um, if you're using a regular string, you can just concatenate plus equals kind of thing. I would say append something like get puzzle row. And then I could say, give it the row number and the width, and it could somehow magically generate a row of pieces or, for me. And then finally at the end, then all you have to do is do puzzle to string. If you're using that string, of course, you can just return your string, but I'm using string builder. So yeah, um, basically my strategy then, you can see from this code, is to build the puzzle row by row. And you'll see as I get into it and implement this, um, I'm actually within any given row, I'm gonna build it layer by layer. So you could think of it like a sub row, sort of a, a, a part of a puzzle piece. The top part, the next part, because remember we're doing this line by line with text characters, right? So um, let's implement this magic, right? First thing, I will, I'm gonna sort of identify my piece parts that I can use to build those rows piece by piece. 
And so I'm gonna make some string arrays for that. I'm gonna say private static. Uh, this is a static class, right? So it, I like to tell people that's like turning object-oriented programming off. So my methods have to be static, or my members have to be static too, because um, this doesn't work off creating puzzle objects, right? This is more like a logical housing of code. So that's why my member will be static. I said it would be a string array. And we could call it, let's go odd row parts. And what I mean by part is it's gonna be a line. So that's gonna be one, that's gonna be one, that's gonna be one, etc. And hopefully you can see that within each of these parts, right? It's the same set of characters repeating this unit it's got a space between it, but it just keeps repeating. And same for the next line and the next line. So I'm gonna kind of make these things that I have highlighted here, these parts that I can kind of reference and use to construct when I need them. So we've got odd row parts. I'll say that's a new string and I'll initialize it with these parts. So I could say that first one looks like, I think there should be a space between the parentheses and then maybe two underscores. I think that looks right. Yeah. And remember, it's okay if you get it wrong. We're going to run the test and see our output and we'll see, you know, one of the little notches is too far right or too far left and then you just adjust it as you need. So, let's try to get close here. So my second piece or part, it would be this underscore vertical bar and what, maybe 3 or 4 spaces before it repeats something like that I'll try that and then our third piece will be this uh, open parenthesis underscore uh, space space underscore space something like that and then our fourth part will be vertical bar underscore underscore parenthesis space close underscore something like that before it repeats good and then um, note that arbitrarily, I decided to call this bottom layer, um, I called it for an odd piece. But you notice how part of it, this edge right here, sort of corresponds with the odd row and the even row, right? They share it together. But um, you can see that some, like the vertical bar clearly reaches up into the first uh, space there. So that's why it's an odd row part. But you can imagine we could do something similar for the even rows. And I'll call it even row parts. And so that'll be a little different. These will be, let's see, what do we have first? A vertical bar, underscore, maybe four spaces. And then for our second piece, we have a space underscore close parenthesis space something like that and maybe two or three spaces we'll see our third piece will be vertical bar oops vertical bar underscore underscore uh, underscore did i get that right and then there will only be three pieces for um, the even. One, two, three. And really this, I guess the even row parts is the same as the bottom row. I could combine those into um, just use one string to represent those if you want to, if you want to be more efficient. But one thing I got to do is get rid of the, because I copied this one, so I should have four strings. We don't need four here. Remember, as I'm constructing the puzzle, I'm starting at the top and going down. So um, when I get, I'll start with this for the even rows, and then two, and then three, like that. So there's there should be three parts in there. And again, if you want to break this last one out into a separate string and just call it bottom edge or, or middle edge or I don't, whatever you want to call it. I guess it's a bottom here and a middle here. However you want to do that, I'll just work with this. Okay, good. So I got these little parts I can use to construct. Now, 
let's implement this idea of getting odd and even puzzle rows. So I've got the general get puzzle row. It should be something like private static uh, return a string, right? Each time, see up here, we're appending a string to the string builder. And we'll call it uh, get puzzle row. We've got to implement that. And we saw it takes a row and a width. And row and width. Okay. And so the idea here is um, I'll basically check whether the row number is even or odd, and then I can do something different um, based on that row number. So something like if row modulo 2 equals 1, meaning it's an odd row. And note, I used 1 here. I used some human numbering. I called it row 1 instead of computer numbering that's zero-based. But if you want to use zero-based, feel free to make that adjustment yourself. So the idea is I would do something like if it's an odd row, return. Uh, I'm going to break these out, so I'll do something like get odd puzzle row. Um, probably also needs the row in the width. And then else get even puzzle row, right? Because the even rows are built differently than the odd ones. The odd ones repeat, right? And if this were a bigger height, you would see the even rows repeat. It'll just go on and on. So this is the general idea. This isn't quite right, but I just want to show you the general idea. We're going to do something like this. This is just generalized, you know, and it can grab the right one based on the row number. It'll know if it's odd or even. So then we'll have to implement these two methods. And you see it, how we're just kind of stepping down, right? Like you start with something really abstract, like, oh, hey, this solves the problem, but it doesn't really implement anything, right? And then as you implement, you know, you expose a little bit more of the implementation, right? Hopefully you can kind of see that theme recurring as we do these challenges that you're sort of stepping down uh, layer by layer. You're not sort of doing the whole thing in one spot. And that's a, a good pattern to get into as you write software. So good. Let's um, make these get odd puzzle rows where the the sort of the rubber meets the road and we'll actually really implement it and generate some string output. So we can say private static string and we called it get odd puzzle row. And it will take a row and a width. Int row. That's the terminology we're using. Okay, so let's actually build some output here. And so I'm going to have four lines here. And I'm going to do something like string line one equals, you know, yada yada. And I'm going to repeat this. There's four of them. And of course, I got to name them uniquely. Okay, and then we'll just write out these string rows. And then finally, I can return those lines separated by a new line character, right? We got to make sure we're not just um, doing this pattern and then taking this pattern and putting it right on the same line up here. That would be a mess. So we don't want to do that. So line one, let's do that. Now you notice with line one, um, it doesn't start right at the beginning. There's some space there. So we might have to figure out how to generate that. Is it couple space? Two seems like a good guess. Let's try that. Plus. And then I'm going to sort of use enumerable repeat. Remember how we've done that? And I can repeat the patterns. And I know how many times to repeat it because we have the width parameter. And then the idea being I can join these. We use string join a lot now. Um, and we talked about this, I think, up front, that it's clear there's a space, a single space between each of these. So let's see what that could look like. String join. Let's join them with a space. And then we could say enumerable repeat, right? And then we can grab our part. We could say, what I call that? Odd row parts or something? Odd row parts. 
row parts zero. I want the first one. And I want it repeated how many times? With, right? How wide it is. If there's four wide, then I want four of them, right? Uh, so that closes string join. Good. And we'll do the same kind of thing with line two. So for line two, what do you think? Maybe a single space there? Plus string join. And for line two, uh, I don't think we need a space between our joins, right? Because it, it's got the space built into it and then it goes immediately into the underscore bar, vertical bar, right? That's why I, I didn't put a space there. I'm just gonna leave it empty so it crams everything together. Enumerable repeat odd row parts one with and then uh, for line two I think we need to cap it so we had remember our pattern stopped here so at the end we're gonna get underscore bar a bunch of space and then nothing so I'm gonna add that final bit um, like this Something like that. And I'm sure I'm gonna mess one of these up. So don't feel bad if, if you're doing it like this too. You just run the test button and see where you messed up. Um, line three, actually maybe I should do that just to show you how you can build this as you go. We could say return line one plus new line plus line two. Um, but we don't have get even. For, even's going to be similar. I'll just put this in now so you can. Oh, we'll copy the whole thing because I didn't even make that method in. Otherwise, we're just going to get compilation errors, right? I'll say there's no get even puzzle row if I try to run now. So get even puzzle row, sure, do all that. Um, we know it's going to be wrong, but I just wanted you to see how you can watch the output as you go. And notice I started using link methods there, that innumerable repeat, so I better add that. But if I hit test now, let's see if there are errors first. Okay, I didn't have, wait, your solution didn't return anything. What did I miss? Row one, one, then line one. Module two equals. Oh, it should be because I used one base numbering, right? So it had zero there, um, less than or equals to the rows, right? Because one is not less than one. We had one passed in there, so this should help. Okay, good. So now you can see some kind of glob. You know, it's it's something. It's looking like a piece, but you can see how mine's shifted. Right, this vertical bar doesn't line up like theirs does. So um, you can kind of repeat this process to get things lined up the right way. Let me go ahead and adjust. Let's see, we have, we're gonna have, I'm gonna go ahead and put these other two back in, line three and line four. And so for line three, we'll do Line three, I think, starts right at the beginning. See that open parenthesis? So I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna add any padding to the front. String join. And for line three, we can do empty string for the join. We can say enumerable repeat odd row parts two with. And again, I think we'll have to cap at the end, right? Plus, what was it? Open parenthesis, underscore. Got to watch out. They try to close those parentheses for you. Normally that's nice, but it's kind of obnoxious here. Um, line four then should be, looks like there's a space offset there, plus string join. And I'll go for line four, empty string, numerable, repeat, 
odd row parts three width. And we have to cap that to um, where is two, three, four. Yeah, so I'm just going to put a vertical bar at the end there for my cap. And then when this whole thing is done, I can do something like line one plus line two plus line three plus line four. And I'm not going to put a new line at the end because I don't want a space. I want to go right into the even row if there's more than one row, but something like this. Um, I'm going to test. Maybe this will give us a bigger picture that we can look at. So we failed the test. Um, let me see. Visually, like we said, it's looking pretty close, but I think this one isn't lined up right. It looks like it needs to go over one spot. What do you think? We put another space in there, line one. Solution. That looks pretty good, but I think I need an extra space in here, All right? This looks like it doesn't come over far enough now. So let's go to our odd parts. That would be part, what, two? Maybe needs an extra space. So let's see, that looks better. Where am I? Okay, so three is definitely wrong. Row three in there. Do you see that with the parentheses? Um, my underscore should be right in the middle of these below it. So let me add some space there. Okay, we got it right, so we got green there. See, nothing magic about this, it's just kind of trial and error. Um, I got my piece matched up. And obviously these other examples won't work because I didn't implement the, um, the even rows yet. But that's a good start. So let's, yeah, let's go ahead and do the same thing with even rows and we'll shore that up and we'll address something, some things that aren't fully addressed yet. Um, obviously instead of odd row parts, we're going to want even row parts, even row parts. Um, and then let's see how they look. Um, maybe I'll just run to get an update. Okay. Um, so yeah, we need to start on a new line here. That would be important right so get even puzzle row I'm gonna start with the new line here okay that's better um, we're still not lined up there so let's do for even puzzle row, I think line one should have one space, not two spaces. And then, and I think we're gonna have to cap that at the end. Yeah, with a vertical bar underscore. Vertical bar underscore. Let's try this. Um, for with three and height two, what I do wrong here? So that lines up. That looks much better on row one of the even piece. Row two, row two might be all right there. So let's get line three in, and we won't have a line four because there's only we talked about that shared edge there. So we'll do line three. Line three. How do we? Make that start with a space offset plus string join. Oops. String join, um, empty string, enumerable, repeat, even row parts two width. 
And I think we need a vertical bar cap at the end. Let's try this. Oh, and then we got to add our. line three um, and you could probably do some kind of string join with the new line character on the lines if you want to clean that up if this was bugging you how I was doing that okay what we get three by three let's see where are we off Expected string length, 171, but we're missing to address those issues anyway. So a couple other um, things that are necessary here. Let's go back to our get puzzle row method, and I'm going to add a bit here. Let's go rogue greater than one. We're going to use that ternary operator. We're going to add a new line if necessary. Otherwise, not. So that's just going to tell us to start on a new line uh, when we're on an odd row that's not the first row. So the first row we don't want to start with a new line, right? That would shift everything down a line with an empty space. So don't do that, but only do that when um, row is greater than one. When you have to make another odd row, then you want to sort of uh, start on a new line. So that was one thing that we're definitely going to need for sure. So note that when we get up to like three rows, um, we won't need to build the top row again, right? We're sort of tacking on to the the even row. So imagine this height was three. We're going to have to address that too. So I better do that. Let's go if the row equals one, right? If you're on the first row, then you'll say line one plus n a new line that's a new line character otherwise nothing so it's like i'm not necessarily adding line one i'm including line one if the row is equal to one i'm at the very top of the puzzle and i'm adding it but if i'm on row three five seven etc i don't need line one anymore it's formed by the bottom of the even row that was above it so let's do that too this character right here should be a parenthesis right it should look like this so it was my cap piece in the get even row puzzle. Sorry about that. Um, for line, which line would this be? One for line two, should be underscore close parenthesis. Oh man. Oh, you know it's bad. This needs to go out more. So the end cap needs to go out more. That was get even puzzle roll. Let's add a space in there. Okay, that makes it line up, but this part isn't lined up. So my other cap needs a space too, I think. There we go, there's green. Sorry about that, all these little characters, you go cross-eyed trying to look at them. All right, we have green, we are clear to submit. So yeah, can be a little frustrating, but um, you can take a systematic approach to it. You could have you know, been diligent and wrote all this stuff out beforehand. I kind of uh, took a shortcut and just said, I liked the output the tests gave and sort of build the the output a little bit of, at a time and you can watch it form but yeah hopefully you saw the idea like just pretend you have all these magical methods right like just get puzzle row don't worry if it's even or odd and you can solve these problems from a high level in a really abstract kind of way 
and then um, go implement get puzzle row you know and add a little bit more detail well now you expose well there's something different about odd rows and even rows and so you still don't really do the work though right you're just kind of like this is a kind of like a switch you know what I mean like hey if you got this kind of row go this way if you got an even row go this way it's just kind of directing people in a in a y direction right and then finally you get down and you actually implement you're actually returning content here you're kind of deferring deferring and you, eventually you get to a point where you have some concrete implementation where the work's getting done at a low level and then sort of all those low level parts get integrated together to make larger solutions um we only had sort of three levels here right get puzzle row and then from here to here but in a large scale software project you could have many dozens of layers so um, it makes it makes software easier to work with and think about in my opinion and i think a lot of other people's so i hope this is instructive uh sorry about me missing some of these details i didn't put spaces or characters where i needed to but um thanks for hanging with me let me know what you came up with and otherwise i'll submit this off and get my points you know what to do check the solutions hit me up with comments concerns otherwise we'll move on to another challenge as usual thanks for watching